Crimea isn't just another piece of land. It's the linchpin for security across Ukraine and the broader European region. Nestled in the Black Sea, Crimea holds the strategic high ground that determines control over vital maritime routes and Ukraine's access to global trade through its ports. For Europe, this region has major implications on stability and security, as control over Crimea allows for unchecked military dominance in the region. If Russia is allowed to keep Crimea, even under a so-called ceasefire, Ukraine remains vulnerable, perpetually exposed to threats from the south. This isn't just about land, it's about the freedom and sovereignty of Ukraine, Europe, and all nations that respect international law, according to former commander of U.S. Army Europe. Lieutenant General Ben Hodges allowing Russia to retain Crimea would not only be a tactical loss for Ukraine, but would also signal a tolerance for territorial annexation, effectively rewarding Russian colonial ambitions and undermining international law. Hodges stresses that Crimea enables Russia to dominate the Black Sea region and control critical access points, which would stymie Ukraine's economic recovery and restrict its access to the sea. Listen yourself what General Hodges has to say. It's important that people understand the geography of the Black Sea region and why Crimea is so important. It's not just some piece of land or some province. It is the most important part of Ukraine's uh, sovereign territory, which is why Catherine the Great annexed it back in the at the end of the 18th century. And it's the reason that Russia uh, was willing to uh, flaunt international law and annex it illegally back in 2014, because Crimea gives its owner the ability to dominate the Black Sea region uh, with air power, sea power, uh, missiles. If the Russians have it, they are able to continue to uh, attack Russian or Ukrainian seaports. Uh, Crimea also blocks or controls access in and out of Azov Sea, which is not international water. It's, it's internal water agreed between Russia and Ukraine. But as long as Russia sits in Crimea and has that big bridge there and over the Kerch Strait, Ukraine will never be able to rebuild Mariupol and Berdansk even after they liberated. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine is the largest European conflict since World War II. Now, more than two years into this brutal conflict, much of the world still grapples with what is truly at stake. Calls for compromise or negotiation persist among international commentators, often failing to account for the gravity of Russia's objectives. Yet Putin's intentions are clear and unapologetic. He seeks not a truce, but total Ukrainian submission. Recently, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev made Moscow's aims explicit, declaring that Russia intends to occupy any remaining Ukrainian territory. This brutal ambition underscores that any ceasefire or compromise, such as ceding Crimea, would merely embolden the Kremlin. As Hodges warns, conceding Crimea would serve as a de facto endorsement of Russian imperialism and would signal to other authoritarian regimes that the West lacks the resolve to defend the very principles it espouses. The Kremlin's growing sense of impunity is evident in its increasingly ruthless tactics. In July, on the eve of the NATO summit, Russia bombed Ukraine's largest children's hospital in broad daylight, targeting civilians and healthcare workers with no regard for international law. In August, emboldened by the lack of global response to their previous attacks on infrastructure, Russian forces struck Kyiv's hydroelectric dam, highlighting their readiness to destroy critical Ukrainian infrastructure at any cost. Since the spring of 2024, Russia has also escalated its campaign to cripple Ukraine's power grid, destroying more than half of the country's energy generation capacity. This has plunged millions of Ukrainians into a dire situation, with electricity available only sporadically, a strategy designed to turn winter into a weapon and freeze Ukrainians into submission. Such calculated brutality serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of appeasement. General Hodges points out that a negotiated settlement with Russia, especially one that allows Putin to retain control over Crimea, would not end the conflict, but only prolong Ukraine's suffering and compromise Europe's security. Putin has consistently treated ceasefires as temporary tools to regroup and rearm. Between 2014 and 2022, Russia entered 20 ceasefires in Ukraine and violated each one. 
A so-called peace deal that leaves Crimea in Russian hands would likely follow this pattern, giving Russia time to rebuild its forces and strike again. Any concessions to Moscow would devastate Ukrainian morale, destabilize Kyiv's government, and damage U.S. credibility, with ripple effects extending across Eastern Europe. The West's failure to hold Russia accountable for its extensive war crimes has created a climate of impunity that fuels Moscow's aggression. Russia has committed a catalog of atrocities in Ukraine, from bombing residential areas to torturing civilians in occupied territories. In recent months, it has continued its policy of forced deportations, displacing Ukrainians from annexed regions and replacing them with Russian nationals, systematically erasing Ukrainian culture and identity. Allowing Russia to retain Crimea would effectively sanction this campaign of ethnic cleansing and colonial expansion, condemning millions of Ukrainians in occupied territories to a grim future of oppression, torture, and death. Despite these blatant crimes, a pervasive pessimism has settled over many of Ukraine's Western supporters, especially in light of Ukraine's recent counteroffensive, which has not met the high expectations set by previous gains. Reports suggest that U.S. and European officials are considering winding down their support, with some arguing that a way out of the war is needed. However, this mindset dangerously underestimates both Putin's ambitions and Ukraine's resilience. As Hodges emphasizes, there is no way out that does not involve a robust defense of Ukraine's territorial integrity, beginning with Crimea. Ukraine's struggle is not an isolated battle. It is a frontline defense of the international rules-based order. Throughout the invasion, Ukraine has defied expectations, liberating nearly half of the territory occupied by Russian forces in the early months of the war. However, delays in the delivery of critical Western arms, like the Army Tactical Missile System and dual-purpose improved conventional munitions, have slowed Ukraine's progress, allowing Russia time to dig in. Furthermore, Western prohibitions on Ukrainian use of these weapons within Russian territory have placed artificial constraints on Kyiv's strategy, limiting its ability to disrupt Russian supply lines and force Moscow to defend its own territory. General Hodges and other military experts argue that if Ukraine is to succeed in its next phase, the West must eliminate these restrictions and provide the military aid Ukraine needs to strike decisively. In this new phase of the conflict, the West needs to recognize the stakes and focus on achieving a definitive outcome in Ukraine's favor. Supporting Kyiv's clear path to victory requires a sustained commitment to regaining Crimea. As Hodges has argued, without the liberation of Crimea, Ukraine will remain vulnerable, with Russia constantly using the peninsula as a base for military operations and as a tool to control Black Sea access. Regaining Crimea would not only cripple Russian operations in southern Ukraine, but would also deliver a critical blow to Putin's imperial ambitions, sending a strong message to authoritarian regimes worldwide that the international community stands firm against territorial conquest. Russia's threat extends far beyond Ukraine. In recent years, Moscow has strengthened its alliances with other authoritarian regimes, forming a coalition that seeks to dismantle the post-World War II international order and replace it with a system governed by force and intimidation. Russia has launched sabotage campaigns, election interference, and even attempted assassinations in Europe, using hybrid warfare tactics to destabilize the West. This axis of autocracies, which includes China, Iran, and North Korea, is actively working to undermine the sovereignty of nations worldwide. The only way to prevent this coalition from gaining further strength is by securing a decisive Ukrainian victory. Backing Ukraine to reclaim Crimea is not only a moral imperative, but a strategic necessity. By restoring Ukrainian control over Crimea, the West would protect Europe's security, restore the integrity of international law, and affirm the right of nations to determine their futures free from coercion. However, the support must be more than just verbal. Ukraine's allies must lift restrictions on the use of Western weapons, provide long-range missiles, fighter jets, and robust air defense systems, and commit to supporting Ukraine whatever it takes until victory is achieved. General Hodges concludes that Western resolve is critical. The conflict in Ukraine is a test of global commitment to democracy and sovereignty. 
The future of the international order depends on whether we recognize the fight in Ukraine as a frontline defense for global stability. The shortest path to victory and lasting peace in Europe runs through Crimea. The time to act is now.